Yes, I'm with Howell Dominate. Dominate, 2-0. The game was a little close at times, but how does it feel walking out of the first week now, at least undefeated again? Uh, I think it was good. I mean, we, we didn't play a perfect week. We had a lot more mistakes than we expected, but I'm proud that we were able to come back in games. I know we struggled with that last split, um, especially with like having two Korean players. Our communication's better now to the point where we can actually come back in games. We actually can take good fights when we are behind. So there were some good, but um, if we can just clean up our early game, I think it will be really strong. And actually, talk to me a little bit about how that is happening now, because you say last split you guys had trouble coming back in games. What's the main difference within the game, communication-wise, that's allowing you to make comebacks? I think there's just a lot more trust um, with our shot calling or like what we want to do. Um, now when Expecial and I are making calls or Piglet's making calls, we're all buying into it and we're, we're all like on the same, um, we're, we're all on board with it. So when we have a situation like um, they're funneling into us, we know our win conditions, we know that we need to like kite back in that game and we're able to actually strategically play the game where before we kind of just like all run into them and die, like no matter what. So um, yeah, I definitely think that, that it's just more trust within our team. And this obviously did put you guys to 2-0. Last split, you guys also started 2-0, and then you ended up having some struggles in the next weeks. So now, knowing you're 2-0 with some performances you're not necessarily that happy with, how do you prepare for the future weeks and not have a fall off? I think we just try to um, get better every week. I think we might um, like scrim some of the like middle tier teams because I think something that we did is we scrimmed a lot of C9 and TSM, and I don't think that gave us the best diversity um, in terms of knowing what other people play. Uh, we kind of all have our same like meta between TSM, C9, and us, and we don't get to see things like the Aurelia, for example, and just some of the other niche picks that other teams are playing. So I think we just need to diversify our scrim partners and um, also just be, be ready to adapt in-game when they do do something that we're not expecting. Well, thank you very much, Dominic. Congrats on the 2 week. That really was pretty strong as well. Let's send it back to the analyst desk to take us more into the game. Thank you, Jat. And to that point of the Aurelia being very strong, it wasn't enough to win the game there for Team 8, or yeah. at least not in the way that they played the lead that they had built themselves so early on. Well, first I want to talk about how they got that lead. Because the bottom lane, they shoved up. Cali Trolls was in base with Home Guard. That was a premeditated plan that they were going to go forward. The Nautilus ultimate, the Sejuani ultimate, the Porpoise dive. Very well-coordinated dive. Liquid went back into that, but Cali's still sitting on the fountain with Home Guard saying, I'm going to wait for this play to happen. And he TPs to the ward just in case they decide to run back up. And then he comes in and picks up those kills. That's how they got that lead, was a like planned out split push kind of like strategy where you TP in and you pick up the kills after your bottom lane had already com like committed to a dive. They didn't yeah. continue that strategy, though. Once he got fed, they're like, let's group and fight, yeah. which is the wrong way to do it. Yeah, absolutely agree. And I do want to sort of talk like a little bit more about the Cali Trolls Aurelia and sing his praises a bit. I mean, this guy solo killed Quas. Like, yeah. Aurelia was one of the most target banned champions of the entire NALCS split back in spring. Like, Cali Trolls Aurelia is one of those few target bands you always put out there. And it was weird hearing Dom say, like, we're not... We're not used to those weird pocket picks. Like, really, it's like, dog, everyone in Spring Split knew that. Like, I guess there's people forgot or something. Uh, so I think we expect to see the Aureli Band come back in for Cali Trolls just as a general trend throughout summer. He's clearly very successful on the champion. But as you were talking about playing around the game properly, I mean, Team 8 just made so many really awkward, boneheaded decisions. Mm -hmm. And and I, I don't think I can put it all in, like, well, when Nien's there, he talks a lot and it's going to get better. Like, they would just, like, pick fights where Maple's clearing a, a wave bot lane a wave that you should clear, and teammates like, yeah, we're just gonna like go four v five you mid, like no big deal, like it's the right choice. So maybe he'll um, say like, don't fight, don't fight, don't fight. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, you shouldn't need that to be completely fair. But yeah, okay, maybe Nina will help it a little bit. Either way, um, unfortunately, a lot of really sloppy choices by teammate that put Team Liquid back into the game. Yeah, let's uh, jump into our first replay, which is 30 minutes into the game, up near that barren side. This is an example of teammate saying. Hey, let's fight. We're always uh, we're always happy to take yeah. a fight, and it does not work out for them here. Uh, Zyrene, I'm going to give this one to you. Let you take it away. Yeah, the weirdest thing about this is teammate. They have the lead. They're trying to bait Baron for the few minutes before this happens, and they haven't completely cleared it. Team Liquid gets some sneaky wards in there, and then Team Liquid is like, we have a composition that wants to fight you in choke points. Come to us. Both teams are trying to get the other one to come to them, and teammate are the one who make the first mistake because Dodo goes too far forward trying to get vision off the area which is a little too far up anyway that vision is not contesting the area of the Baron and stopping 
them from like not going into the pit. So the hook comes out for Nick Special. Dodo, he does go for an ultimate, but look at Cali Troll's position. He goes off to the left and right there. The ultimate comes from Nautilus, knocks three people up, and the ultimate from Sejuani only hits X Special. Nobody else is hit by that CC, and it's layered anyway. Cali Trolls is not able to take advantage of the Hemo play because he's off on the left side where you saw him running around. So all this damage is going to come through this as we continue to roll the clip out. You're going to see Quas gets out of that immediate equalizer to zone off that choke point. Phoenix throws his spells down, and now Cali Troll shows up to a fight to try and salvage the situation where his team is already in a huge losing position. Dominate runs at Maple Street in the back line, slows his attack speed, slows him, forces the heal out of him, and just runs back into the fight. Because late game, if you don't snowball your AD carry, you don't snowball your Aurelia and end the game, this Nuno is going to make them absolutely useless because they're so auto-attack based. Yeah, you take your most fed champion there, Aurelia. Mm -hmm. Swing them around the outside of that fight. He's not doing damage that yeah. entire time. He did pick up the only two kills there for Team yep. 8, but they were last hits. Yep. All of the damage that was dealt in that fight was from the rest of their more underpowered members. And yep. what's crazy about that fight, though, is, is this was still when Team 8 was ahead in this game. Um, Xpecial actually played that fight incredibly well. Oh, yeah. So, you know, a lot of vision, right? Ten champions running around, particle effects everywhere, and he's like, okay, Aurelia's coming. Toss the hook. Buy some time. She cues in. Play her back out, buy some more time. She still picks up two, and like, Expecial's got 12 health, Quas is below half, but of course, enough time was bought. Um, so even those little things, like just the mindfulness of Expecial, like, helps savage that situation. Yeah, and, and the start still of the, play too, the fight. Where he's, he starts it with a hook. He yeah. starts it with denying them from getting rid of that vision, and then he just one man says, Wani tanks the ultimate. Like, Expecial is definitely a big MVP of that. Fight. I was going to say, Expecial was an MVP of this game, just mechanically as well. We're going to pull up our second replay that we have, which is just. Just a stellar play by him individually here. We, we replayed it in game. We're going to do it again. We'll just roll this out right now. It's just so beautiful to watch because this, Cali, you, one, two, three, boom. Backwards flay. Flay originates from the back of the cast. If Expecial had done that the opposite direction, which finished. is the easier way to do it because your mouse cursor is on the person when you do it that way, he had to put his mouse cursor the opposite direction of Cali Trolls, make it start from the After back. After placing a ward, too. Exactly, to interrupt it. That's absolutely incredible that he's able to do that. I'm pretty sure he was like, all right, let me just sit here, line this up with my spells, and... Let me get out the protractor and the straight edge. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's or, the kind of stuff I did or the not grade, smart And it took me like three minutes <laughs> to do it right and draw it out, yeah. But right uh, there, if he had started it the other way, Cali Trolls would have finished the TP. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was it was... There was only one chance, and he had to do it right away, and he aimed incredibly well. So ultimately, though, 2-0 start for Team Liquid, as mentioned, wasn't probably the toughest schedule of any team, so we'll have to see how the following weeks uh, kind of play out for them. Now we're going to take a quick break, but keep it tuned right here because when we return, Team Dignitas will take on Cloud9. The North American LCS continues after this. We still have to be careful in the early game to fight when we're strong, fight where we're strong. In the right area and at the right times. We should win. All right. Good luck, guys. Bye Love now. you. But now they're being pressured Whoa! quite hard. The mid lane Phoenix dives right in. They throw Ignite down as well. Slushy will get hit up. I'm stunned. I'm coming. Just keep running, keep running. Keep running. Do we have, do you have stun? Kill, 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 kill. Nice guy. Nice, nice guy. Faded, baby. They're on Duke Special. That's a pretty good engage, but that's there. a choke point. I'm sure TSM will remember this one. Slushy's getting hit up now. It looks like teammates able to break that choke point. I'm, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Got Grave slowed. Just kill front line, just kill front line. We'll snowball through the fight. We'll kill them all, we'll kill them all. Okay, good. I'm on the relic. Really flash, really flash. Okay, yeah. go mid, go mid, go mid. They're gonna get Cali Trolls going down. One of the big damage dealers. The DPS coming out of Phoenix is almost unstoppable right now. And Team Liquid take down teammate. 